tape. Ryan Coyne and Lionel Thompson. Coyne, the older fighter, the taller fighter. It's pretty much even a great background in the amateur ranks for Thompson. Coyne has more experience as a professional fighter. That is the setup here and the rules. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And the fight is official after four rounds. And now let's meet him officially with ring announcer Joe Antonacci. Ladies and gentlemen, main events and Pelts Boxing present live from Resorts Hotel Casino on the Boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. NBC Sports Network's Fight Night! Tonight's bouts are sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. Aaron Davis, your commissioner. Tony Orlando is our chairman. And our board members, Stephen Katz and Lynn Hettinger. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Avery Brown, Dr. Dane Clark, Dr. Blair Bergen, and Dr. Dominic Coletta. And our Timekeeper at the bell, Fred Blumstein. Boxing fans, here we go. Main events and Pelts Boxing present our co-main event of the evening. Ten rounds of action in the light heavyweight division. Our judges, Debbie Barnes, George Hill, Joe Pasquale, our referee, Lindsay Page. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he comes to us tonight from Buffalo, New York. He weighed in at 173 and one half pounds, red and white trunks. Professional record in excellent 14 victories against only two defeats. Nine of his wins coming by knockout. Please welcome Lionel Lonnie B. Thompson. And his opponent across the ring. Fighting out of the red corner, he comes to us tonight from St. Louis, Missouri. He weighed in at 174 and one half pounds. Green and orange trunks, professional record, an excellent 21 victories against only one defeat. Nine wins by knockout. Please welcome the Irish outlaw, Ryan Corn. Referee Lindsay Page has our fighter's final instructions. Red corner, red corner, let's go. All right, gentlemen, I want a good, clean fight. I want you to obey my commands at all times. Touch them up, touch them up. 10 rounds, light heavyweights. Thompson has won two straight. So you heard him talk about that knockdown, knockout he faced against Kovalov. He's talking with Chris earlier about it. He has kind of made it his own. He's regrouped. He's ready. We'll see how Coyne is, who admitted it was a mental challenge for him coming off his first loss. And you see Coyne, the left-hander. This is the second straight time that Thompson has fought a southpaw, coming off a win earlier in May against Riley. He said he's trained with about seven or eight southpaws getting ready for this fight. Doesn't think it's going to be a factor. Yeah, he's been in camp with a lot of good guys, Kenny. He's been in with Lucian Boutte, Chad Dawson, very good southpaw fighters in camp. But, you know, doing it in camp and under the bright lights are a little different. And he said uh, he knows that, and he's going to uh, prove himself tonight. Thompson has much more amateur experience. Coyne, though, has this, his 23rd pro fight, compared to 17 for Thompson. But Thompson, what training camps he's been in with the likes of Chad Dawson and all those guys you were mentioning. Yeah, he's got a lot of good experience in the gym. And, uh, you know, sometimes those are very good building blocks to come on a scene like this and have a great performance. So he said he was ready for that type of performance, Kenny. And uh, Ryan Coyne has other plans. Flicks out the jab and connects to Thompson early. So far, Lonnie B is doing some really good work with that left jab and that little counter left hook. He's got Ryan Corn, who's aggressive, trying to come in on him, and uh, you know, Lonnie's uh, taking advantage a little bit early in this first round. What? You can see the southpaw stance of Ryan Coyne. He's got that right foot forward. Lonnie B, the conventional fighter. The southpaw fighter will traditionally look to keep that right foot outside of the left foot of Lonnie to be able to be in position to land that, land that left hand and that right hook. So uh, it's Coyne's job to uh, get in position to land those punches. 
Got to use a jab on the way in, though. Sure. Thompson measuring him out there with the jab. And Ryan's got to let his hands go here because Lonnie's a little too comfortable standing on the outside box. You see, he's nice and smooth. He's fluid. He's got that left hand down in front. Um, he's looking for opportunities to counter with the right hand and uh, counter with the check hook. Certainly, that would be the style of coin that we've seen in the past. Watching some of the video of him, he likes to take it in, bring it on as fast as he can. Yeah. Much like he did when he was a football player. He played at Missouri as a safety and later a linebacker. He said, by his own admission, I was a little too small to play at that Division I level. But he got to that level, liked the hitting, uh, declined to go on to law school that he was thinking about and decided to become a professional boxer. Right. And Ryan's not traditionally a fast starter. So, you know, these first couple rounds, it's, it's very important for Lonnie to be able to take advantage and, you know, set the tempo and the pace for the entire fight because if he does, he can continue to follow that pattern throughout the 10 rounds. Ryan's having troubles finding his range. He needs to go to the body of Lonnie B early to be able to have any success. Uh, very tricky uh, upper body movement from Lonnie. Good left hook from Lonnie. Thompson looking good here in the early going. Dictating the pace here with that jab as round one is coming to an end. Criteria, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense. That's what the three judges ringside are looking for. Happy to have with us a man that knows all about judging and every other aspect of boxing. A legend right here in this state. Larry Hazard, who in that first round, Thompson and Coyne, and he'll be scoring this unofficially for us. Gave that to Thompson. Thompson showing a lot of the things you look for in the criteria, including controlling the pace, dictating the pace early on. He landed 11 jabs compared to none for Coin in that first round. And we talked about that, BJ, how Lonnie B, as he is known, was able to use that so effectively. Yeah, he controlled the, the first round with his jab. Great up and down movement and up and down combinations with the jab up top, the right hand of the body, confusing Coin a little bit. And Coin's uh, you know, looks a little tight and tentative in these first two rounds, so he's got to loosen up. Well, good shots by Lonnie there. Let's check in with Chris Mannix. Jose, what, Jose, what kind of fight do you want to see from Ryan? I want him to get a little more aggressive, just like what he's doing right now. Staying in tight, don't stay on the outside. You told him at that last round to keep it simple, don't get creative. What did you mean by that? I just wanted him to keep turning him and trying to shoot that left hand over the top. Thanks, Jose. Thanks, Chris. We'll see if he's able to do that. He's going to the body this time is Thompson. And something Ryan needs to start doing is going to the body as well because, like I said, Thompson has a very, very elusive upper body. He's very tough to hit, especially early in the fight. If you start to break the body down first, nice shot by Ryan Coyne. He can have more success later on as the rounds go by. You see Thompson, 31 to 5, and the punch count landed so far. Yeah, he's got that good range. He's comfortable, his hands down, he's relaxed, he's countering with hooks and right hands. Coins walking in, still trying to find his uh, find his distance and his spacing. He's having trouble so far, Kenny. And that was a nice right by Thompson. And Coins got to make Lonnie uncomfortable. Lonnie's very comfortable standing outside, pot shotting him, boxing him out here. Ryan, uh, Ronnie, Ryan's got to work in with a double jab and uh, continue to work the body if he wants to be successful. That's what Thompson was talking about. He doesn't really look at the number of fights one guy's had compared to another. He looks at the quality. He thinks that's the big edge for him, that he has faced guys who are sparring against them or guys like Kovalov last year that he's had stronger competition to get ready for this. Yeah, he's had some good competition. He's been in camp with some good guys. That could be a tremendous confidence booster. And you see Lonnie came out swinging in the first two rounds. Got a huge, huge advantage on punches landed so far. Punch count continues to build up here for Thompson as round two is coming to a close between these light heavyweights. And back to action, there's Ryan Coyne, and there's a different side of him with his son, Kelly Patrick, who turns two months old today. And because of young Kelly Patrick, Ryan chose to stay in the Midwest for this training camp to get ready to fight Thompson. That, of course, is Coyne in the Irish colors of the green and the orange, and he is uh, talking about fighting, coming off that loss to Oliveira. So what does he do? Because Oliveira's in the neighborhood. He loses to him in April and says, hey, I want you to come and be my sparring partner to get ready for Thompson. I want to stay close to home. I just had a little baby boy. And that showed a lot of experience out of uh, the corner of Ryan Coyne. Hey, this guy just went in and beat us. 
We have a lot we can learn from him in a training camp. And Marcus Oliveira is a very good fighter. He just fought Jurgen Bramer, lost a very close decision to him in Germany today, actually, for the WBA title. And uh, you know, I'm sure he gave uh, Ryan Korn a lot of good work. That loss to Marcus Oliveira was in a WBA eliminator back in April. The only loss so far for Ryan Coyne as a pro. And this is the type of fight that Ryan Coyne needs to fight. He needs to be close to his opponent, smothering him, putting pressure on him, and making sure that Lonnie B doesn't have room to operate out there because he's pretty smooth on the outside, Kenny. From the outside, Thompson has been controlling the fight. He's relaxed. He's shooting the looser punches. He's going up and down. He's in control. Good body shots by Thompson. Best body shot so far coming here in the middle part of round three. You see Ryan's keeping his head right there in the middle. He's got to make sure and get his head off the one side. He can do that to one of two ways. He can position his foot on the outside of Lonnie's. That'll keep him off the center and allow him to land some punches as well. Meanwhile, Coyne trying to come back to the body. Let's check in with Chris. Billy, what are you seeing out there these first couple of rounds? See, he's he doing the right thing with the guy. He's taking his time. He's outspeeding the guy. His defense is very tight. Um, this fight shouldn't go no more about three or four rounds, so they should stop this fight. He's too quick for the guy. He's using his speed and his experience, so I'm happy with what's going on right now. You said after that last round you want to see him get aggressive, start walking him down soon, will he? Yes, probably in the next round. He's starting to walk him down now, if you notice. And he's, he's being successful with it because the guy's not hurting him. He's blocking most of the punches. So this should be over with soon. We can see what's happening. Thanks, Billy. Beautiful right hand of the body by Lonnie B. You see him using that jab to kind of blind Ryan Coyne, dropping down and sticking that straight right hand right to the midsection. Good offense from Lonnie B. Thompson told us yesterday at the fighter meeting he wanted to take his time in this. He hoped that he would have a late round stoppage or a unanimous decision. That was his plan. It seems to be working so far here in round three. You know, one of the great, most popular champions, I think, in the last generations, Ray Boom Boom Mancini. What a story he has in a powerful documentary, The Good Son, that will be coming up next right after fight night here on NBCSN. Ray will be joining us as well live here in just a few moments. But The Good Son, what a story from Ray Mancini. He was the hottest thing on television. His fights were action-packed. You know, I was all on top of the road, and I was riding the wave. And then after that, it all came crashing down. For him to tragically have taken a life of a father, and now to meet that son, that's got to be a real challenge for Ray. But I think at that moment, I'm going to feel a sense of relief, a sense of peace. I hope he finds the same. Times, the New York Times talks about Ray mesmerizingly guiding everyone to the present. And here he is, Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Ray, always good to see you. Thank you, pleasure here. You know, this uh, documentary you're getting such great praise for. You've seen it, I don't know how many times, living it uh, again, uh, what could have been a tragedy, and you turned this into a very heartfelt moment. What has this whole experience been like for you to relive this? Well, it's been a, bit, a little bit surreal, for sure. And uh, I, I feel like Rolling Stones. I've been on a world tour for the last year. <laughs> it's about, we're, this is about to, about to end it right here tonight. And, uh, but it's been a pleasure, man. And it's, I'm very proud of this, and I hope that people enjoy it and find out a little bit about me and where I come from and what I'm about. Well, it's like I think the most powerful documentaries are the ones that can touch you and make you smile and make you cry. And it seems to do all of the above with storytelling by the likes of Mickey Rourke as well and Ed O'Neill, some right. of your friends. Yeah, I'm very honored that Eddie and, and Mickey and, of course, Ray Leonard, my buddy Ray Leonard, would be part of it. And they just make it more special. And um, without them guys, it wouldn't be as, as special as it is. Larry Hazard, by the way, all three rounds to Lionel Thompson. He in the red, landing that right there against Ryan Coyne. We're in round four. This is scheduled for 10 between these light heavyweights. What do you think about this fight so far, Ray? You know, I'm watching it, and I mean, you know, BJ, I'll tell you, when you fight a southpaw, you got to back a southpaw up. But this guy's coming forward, but he's not active. Is it me? I mean, Ryan Coyne is not active at all. If He's just standing in front of uh, Lonnie and making it easy for him. Because, you know, I'm telling you, with Southpaw, you have to back a Southpaw up or you're going to be in for a headache all night long. But he comes forward, but he's not throwing enough punches. He's not busy enough. One of my old trainers, Buddy McGirt, told me, BJ, when you get in close and you back a Southpaw up, they're just a normal guy. So I agree with what Ray's saying. You know, you get in close to him, you back him up, and uh, you make him fight 
in an uncomfortable manner. You see Lonnie's very comfortable standing on the outside, pot shotting up and down, great combinations. Ryan's got to do his job and make him uncomfortable in there. He's you know, not active enough. You know, BJ, I want to say, when you say an old trainer, Buddy McGirt, you ain't lying. He's older than Dirt for playing <laughs> <laughs> I know. My man, Dirt McGirt, he's one of my best, one of my best friends. I love Buddy. And one of the great champions, man. One of the great champion he was. Yes, he was. As many would say that about you, I think everybody in this building is shaking your hand or trying to and taking a picture with you, right? I appreciate it. Uh, believe me, it's, it beats the alternative. They could say, forget the bum. <laughs> you know, Lonnie doing some more good work here in this fourth round, guys. He's coming up the middle with the right uppercut. He's putting the guard to Ryan Coyne. And, uh, you know, he's just controlling the pace with that little jab. He's kind of using it to, to get distance, to get space, dropping combinations, dropping big body shots. And, uh, you know, in the midway point of the fight, Ryan Coyne has got to go to the drawing board and come up with a new strategy, because so far it's not working, guys. Is it me? Ryan Coyne's got a, well, he's built like body beautiful. He's got a great physique, but he don't punch at all. I mean, is it because, I don't know if it's not putting his arm, um, in his body weight behind him, turning on his punches, or it's just arms. He's, you know, really, he's, he, he's isn't shown like he punch much. Yeah, he's just, uh, I think he's trying to make contact first. Um, he hasn't had any success hitting him at all. So, um, you know, like I said earlier, you want to start with the body attack, back him up, go to the body, find something, and then uh, kind of build momentum from there. But yeah, good point, Ray. If he'd hit him, if he'd hit him with a good shot, he would change this fight, the direction of it real quick. Right. All the momentum still in the way of Lionel Thompson, the man in the red, continues to puzzle coin as the round comes to an end. Heavyweights, Ryan Coyne in the green and the red, Lionel Thompson, who has been carrying the action in this fight and an active corner between rounds for Coyne. He has a nasty cut right there on his left eye from a punch that he sustained in that last round. Looks like it's about right on the eyelid, guys. Yeah, and that's a real bad spot for a cut, Kenny, because when it's on the eyelid, it's tough to keep it out of the eye, the blood. Doctors take uh, a lot of precaution when they see a situation like that. You know, Ray, You've had a lot of fights. I've had 30 pro fights. You've had way more than me. How many times in uh, fights have you been cut, and what kind of uh, experience did you feel like when, you, when, when, the, when the cut started? You know, BJ, it's funny, because people always say, oh, you were a bleeder, you were a bleeder. I started laughing. I said, you know, people remember, because three of my last five fights, I, I was cut, and I was cut bad, and I bled a lot, especially the last two Bramble fights. But out of the 34 fights, I only cut, was cut five times. But there happened to be three of my last five fights, as I said. Most people remember the fights with Bramble, yeah. and, you know, and, and uh, so... But, um, and I have, against Bramble, there were cuts were bad, above, below line, on the side, so, you know, there was a lot of blood. It was very colorful, for sure. <laughs> Let's check in with Chris Mannix, Chris. Guys, some brutal honesty in Ryan Coyne's corner after that last round. Jose Ponce said, you're losing, you have to get busier. They wanted to get aggressive with his jab. Jose told Coyne, you gotta get your hands going. You can't just stand there in the middle of the ring and keep taking those punches. All right, Chris, and you wonder what's going through Coyne's mind right now as he tries to figure out what to do with Thompson, who continues to snap off those jabs, is dominating the punch count here. But Coyne, not only coming off his first loss, you see the jab count there of Thompson, 25 to 7 right now. Uh, but he had two title fights that fell through. That led to court action and uh, got a little convoluted. He was going to fight Jones. He was going to fight Cleverly. Title shots, they fell through. He talked about that quite a bit. You wonder how much that stays in his mind and getting ready for this fight. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, that's kind of water under the bridge, the Nathan Cleverly situation, the Guillermo Jones uh, fight, both fights that were taken away from Ryan Coyne. But, you know, these are the types of fights that Ryan Coyne needs to win and look impressive against it, you know, if he wants to have a, a title shot. And uh, I think this is the right type of fight for him. So he needs to definitely get started, get something going in his corner. I love the brutal honesty in the corner. And, uh, you know, it's still not working so far in, uh, in round five. Heavyweight's main event, Mansoor undefeated, taking on Price. That is coming up next live on Fight Night. And you wonder in a situation, Ray, I don't know if you had ever entered your mind, but you get a lot of other things that are going on around you. I don't know from whatever it could be that distracts a fighter. Uh, and even though, as BJ said, that's in the past, Coin did talk a lot about it yesterday to us about all the complications and the lawsuits and everything else that ensued. Well, you can't carry that into the ring with you. Obviously, you got to leave that in the past if you want to move forward in your career. Right now, he's hoping he can figure out a way to move forward against Lionel Thompson as Thompson continues to stick and move and control the action on a bloodied coin as the round comes to a close. Oh, yeah. And here in the end of the fifth round, you got one of the actual good moments for Ryan Coyne. He landed a little bit of a right hook. And uh, good shot right there by Ryan Coyne. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, Thompson saying, yeah, it, it, it didn't hurt as we start round six. 
Yeah. It didn't look quite as clean in the replay as it did in uh, full speed, but, you know, starting to make contact somewhere. Average punches so far as once again another round scored for Lionel Thompson. Our Larry Hazard has every round going his way. Thompson in the red. Good jab by Lonnie right there, Kenny. And again, now body work. And that allows him to do whatever he wants because when he's working up and down on Ryan Coyne like that, Coyne has to defend all aspects of Lonnie's arsenal. Lonnie's got that nice straight jab, that beautiful raking right hand to the midsection. He's got that nice left hook and that right uppercut. He's able to get all of his punches going because of that body attack, and it's making it very confusing for Ryan Coyne. Oh, nice a right solid hand. right. A strong right by Thompson. Thompson. Thompson has hurt him. And Thompson's going to town now on Coyne. Big punches by, Ryan, big punches by Lonnie Thompson here. This is when he's got to let his hands go, or else the referee's going to stop and jump in and stop it. Even if you're not hurt, you got to let the you let your hands go. You got to fire back on the guy, break him up a little bit, and push him back. I absolutely agree. And I think Ryan's is real confused right now. He's having troubles finding Lonnie Thompson anywhere. He can't hit him in the head. He's not going to the body. So if you're not going to do either one of those two, it's uh it's going to make for a long and uh, very very frustrating night. And BJ, you know, for a southpaw, he leads with the left off a lot instead of going with the jab. Because the jab, no matter what, it's, it comes from a weird angle. It still confuses a right a, a North Orthodox fighter. You gotta come up with a jab a few times, up and down with it, move it up and down, then throw the straight left hand. Exactly. Right now, all he does is leave with a straight left hand. That's not the hardest thing to draw a beat on. It isn't. And when you when you start with that jab, you make Lonnie use his front hand to defend that jab and try to knock it and paw it down. Then you can kind of work in more offense off of that based on what Lonnie does with your jab. But without the jab, it's impossible to see what Lonnie would do. It's, it's all a hypothetical situation. Great. It looks like Cohen just can't catch up to Thompson to land anything. Oh, that, he said that. There's and a good just, shot. There's and, a good, good shot. That always that's his good best shot. shot, maybe. One of his best shots, for sure. But and coming gonna, back with the right is Thompson. I'm sorry, I was just going to say, he's got to stick it out there more. A couple times. Even if you don't hit him, at least let him know you got it. And you can come in behind it with, with the straight right or, or the uppercut or straight hand to the body. Ray Boom Boom Mancini joining us. Coming up next here on NBCSN. The powerful documentary, The Good Son. That is coming up right after our fight night. Plenty more fight action taking place. Round six coming to an end. Thompson and Coyne. Good round for Lyon. We see here in the, in the last part of the sixth round, beautiful counter right hand by Lonnie B there. You see Ryan Coyne pushing out that jab kind of the same speed. There he actually connected on it, but earlier in the round, Lonnie had a beat on it, caught him with a beautiful straight right hand, made Ryan Coyne pay for... Uh, pushing that, that jab out there at the same speed every time. The good news and the bad news for Coyne, he landed six power punches in the last round, the most he has landed in any round in this fight. The bad news, Thompson landed 18, still a three to one. And you see, once again, Larry Hazard scoring at 10-9 for Thompson. Kenny Rice, BJ Floyd, Ray Boom Boom Mancini, and Chris Mannix with you here on Fight Night. And again, right back at it is Thompson. You know, BJ, I don't know about you. I, it drives me nuts when, right, when these guys try to catch punches with their hands instead of moving their head. Why? Why would you let the guy just beat on your arms? Just move your head, man. Yeah, it, it, it's a definitely a new school of, uh, you know, of defense, but, uh, you know, it's not working so far for Ryan tonight. Let's check in with Chris. Jose, how much is that left eye affecting Ryan? Uh, you know what? Not at all. He's actually working a little bit better, believe it or not. We just got to get him to be more aggressive in there, that's all. What do you want to see from him specifically over these last couple? More punches, more left hands, turning them straight over the over the you top. Right. Let's go, man. Turn over. <laughs> Thanks, Jose. Well, the cut oh, yeah. opened up two rounds ago over the left eye, right around the eyelid area of coin. Do you think he's affected by that from your experiences, BJ and Boom Boom? Well, he's, he's of course he's been affected by it. You know, it's a man of the old joke about the, uh, you know, about the trainer says, no, you know, somebody's do something. You know, nobody's hitting you. Nobody's hitting. Nobody, nobody's got. You know, he ain't touching you. And then the fighter says, well, somebody's kicking the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, watch the referee. I mean, yeah, no, it ain't affecting him. Of course, it's affected him. He's, you know, it, it, it judges when you start tasting your own blood. It affects you. It does. And I think what Jose meant was it maybe kind of woke Ryan up a little bit and kind of created a bit of urgency. He had a little better round last round. But he's, he's taken some tremendous body shots in this round. And I think more than anything, those body shots in round seven of this fight are finally starting to take a toll. 
Mansoor Price, heavyweights coming up right after this. And some frustration, perhaps, for Coyne as he continues to reach. It looks like he reaches on some. Granted, he did land some in that last round, but he's still kind of reaching more at Thompson. Yeah. Uh, Thompson, the difficult style. He's got his weight on the back foot. He's waiting to counter punch. And with the counter punch, you got to take him out of his game plan. Like Ray said, you got to back him up. You got to make him work. You got to make him uncomfortable. When you sit on the outside and allow him to pot shot like this, Lonnie B is very tough to beat. Beautiful straight right hand on the middle by Lionel Thompson. And that is the signature punch against the South Park. Lionel Thompson continuing to control the pace. It has been his fight since round one. Ryan Coyne still trying to find an answer. Potential and important in what a counter puncher should do, landing a beautiful body shot to the right side of Ryan Cage's rib cage. Whenever you have an aggressive fighter like that, you cannot forget to go to the body, keep the guy honest. Lonnie B did a great job of that in the last round. And back to live action, that is Thompson in the red trunks controlling this fight. Round eight scheduled for 10. And in power punches through seven, according to CompuBox, Thompson has thrown 237, landed 120, 51%. And unofficial scoring, of course, that round going to Thompson, that last round by Larry Hazard. He has won every round against Coyne, unofficially. Well, I agree. I don't think any of the judges ringside are going to have it any different. This fight's been very easy to score. Lonnie uh, deserves every round so far, and it's just, uh, you know, Ryan never has really gotten started in this fight, and you got to give Lonnie credit for that. Look at the power punch total right there, Ray. Well, you know, it is what kills me. Ryan, he faints. He faints. Beautiful. Then he does nothing. He doesn't throw something behind it. When you faint, you got to throw a punch behind it. That's, the idea of fainting is to, to get the guy out of position. Right. And he does nothing. Well, you got to... Uh, We've got to capitalize on those opportunities. Thompson has done everything that he told us he was going to do at the fighter meeting. He's going to wear his man down, either get a late knockout or win by unanimous decision. Well, in mean, all respect, you know, Ryan, Ryan Coyne isn't making it that difficult for, for you know, Lonnie. He isn't doing it too much. He's standing in front of him, and he's not firing back. He's not doubling up on anything. He's just throwing one punch at a time, he's standing, and he's right in the line of fire for Lonnie. And look how calm Thompson looks. That's the way he's looked throughout this fight. Again, going back to talking with him yesterday, and he was talking with Chris about it. He's had some fun about being knocked out by Kovalov, almost like those basketball players that got posterized by Michael Jordan. Uh, you're facing a great fighter and getting knocked down. He said he, it's the first time he'd ever been down on the canvas. How would he come back? Well, he's won two straight since then, and he's been impressive here tonight against Corn. Yeah, and he has been very impressive tonight against Coin. Coin comes in, you know, gave Marcus Oliveira a tough fight, a fight he was losing, but he, he definitely gave him a, a good scrap. Oliveira got him out of there in the 11th round, but showed that Ryan is in that, that upper level, maybe not the top level, but that upper level here in North America. And, uh, you know, Lonnie putting his name in the sweepstakes in this uh, very talented light heavyweight division. The 28 year old from Buffalo, been a pro for less than. Five years. Special guest commentator tonight, Ray Boom Boom Mancini, and coming up, the documentary, The Good Son. I would urge you to watch it. If you're going out tonight, be sure to set the DVR because it is one of those sports movies that transcend just a typical sports documentary. It touches you in many ways. Coming up next, the main event, it is heavyweights as Thompson continues to go to work on Coyne at the end of the round. Panic City, New Jersey. You're looking at Ryan Coyne, light heavyweight, coming off his first pro loss, and he's had a tough time tonight against Lionel Thompson. Look at the noteworthy heavyweight appearances. we got a heavyweight main event coming up. BJ, we talked about that some earlier. Holmes and Holyfield and Foreman and Lewis and... We can go back to Tyson, as you talked about. Jack Dempsey had a fight in this area. He also had to be trained for a fight, getting ready to fight Gene Tunney back in the mid-20s as well here in Atlantic City. Yeah, he did. He fought the French guy in 1924. He fought uh, Gene Tunney in uh, 1926 in front of 120,000 people, Kenny. It was a raining day. There was 120,000 people outside watching Jack Dempsey and Gene Tunney, a fight that Gene Tunney narrowly won by decision, and uh, just a lot of great heavyweight history here in Atlantic City. Larry Hazard scored the last round, Lionel Thompson. Every round for Thompson. Let's check in now with Chris. To do. He's, I think he's. I think we're ahead. I don't think we lost a round. I don't think we had to take the chances 
I think the guy's trying to take chances. He's not good enough. He just takes a good punch. He's, he's not going to be no more good after this fight. Do you want to see Lionel make some kind of statement and go for a knockout here? No. It's dangerous. I'm winning. I'm winning big and I'm winning spectacular. I ain't lost a round. He, that's what he's a boxer, so he does what he does best. Why get a guy a shot? Thank you, bud. All right. Good advice there from Billy. His man has won every round. At least that's the way it looks to all of us. Yeah, I think he has. And he, he just got in a really nice rhythm early where he was touching coin with the jab. That straight right hand of the body has really disrupted the timing and the uh, offensive attack of Ryan. And uh, it's allowed Lonnie to uh, pretty much land anything he wants. Thompson, 201 punches, landed now to 66. You know, I, I have a long history with Billy Giles. Uh, Billy Giles was the original trainer for uh, Hector Camacho Camacho for, from the beginning of his career. Under a minute to go, round nine. And again, Thompson so effective with that jab all night long and then right back to the body. And you see Coin kind of lunge with that right hook. Forget about the head. Go to the body, land the right hook, land the left hand of the body, touch him anywhere. It's just been very unsuccessful trying to lunge forward with the head. And, uh, you know, like Ray said, without the use of the, of the right jab, it's been very difficult to find a, a good slick boxer like, uh, like Lonnie B. So if Ryan wants to be successful, use the jab, go to the body, forget about the head, and uh, maybe you can uh, do a little better in this last round. But you see Ryan consistently walking into range of Lonnie B. Lonnie B's, his back foot is always set. He's always ready to punch. And uh, Ryan's walking right in, and uh, he's taking the, the brunt of a lot of uh, Lonnie's punches tonight. Clock ticking down on round nine. And a miss by Cohen right at the bell. Light heavyweights Thompson and Corn getting ready for the 10th and final round. This is the co-main event leading up to the heavyweights that we will see next as you look at the corner of Thompson. No, no, you're not. Said he's a stick and move fighter. He can do it well. That's what he's hoping to continue to do. Meanwhile, Amir Mansour is 19 and 0, 14 of those by way of knockout. He's fighting in Kelvin Price, a man that's 14 and 1. There's Mansour backstage. Looking forward to seeing him. He is a story that has been well documented, nine years incarcerated. He has been a pro for 16 years, but there was that interruption in his life and his career, and Mansoor is hoping that he can make a statement that I'm a U.S. heavyweight to reckon with. So too is Price if he can pull the upset here. Meanwhile, we get ready for the business at hand, the 10th and final round. There is Ryan Coyne, who's coming off his first career loss and may have two in a row, unless he can pull something drastic off here against Lionel Thompson in the red to start this 10th round. And you see the swelling on the left eye of Ryan Coyne, courtesy all those right hands and overhand rights from Lonnie. Uh, you know, a lot of damage to that eye, damage to the cut eyelid, blood from the nose. He's in uh, bad shape right now in the 10th round, guys. BJ, did you see that? Line after him with a right hand to the body and lifted his knee. That ain't good. When you see a fighter lift his knee, that ain't good. You know those body shots starting to take a toll. That's it. Larry scoring all the way through. Thompson, 10-9 from one through nine. Quite a different story than when we last saw him on fight night over a year ago against Sergey Kovalev. Many were considering a future champ who became a champ, and he knocked out Thompson. Thompson again talking about he was down. He didn't know where he was. First time he'd been knocked out. <laughs> it was funny, too, in the fighter meeting yesterday, Kenny. He said, I woke up, and uh, when I woke up on the canvas, I was like, man, where am I at? Is this real? He said, I wanted to wake up and be in the club, but he said, nope, I was right here in the ring, and uh, it was a real story. I was dying laughing during the fighter meeting. And that exactly. Uh... <laughs> he had fun with it. He doesn't dwell on it. Uh, he's a very upbeat guy coming in here, and I think that it's shown the way he has approached this fight. Yeah. Not to belabor the point, but Coyne, meanwhile, was a little more dissecting all the other problems and things that had gone on. I don't know how much carried in here. I think the speed of Thompson's had more to do with this than anything else, but totally different attitudes yesterday at the meetings. Finally, a couple of good combinations from Ryan there. It was the use of the right jab, kind of like Ray alluded to a little earlier. He used that right jab, and two good shots, landed a good body shot, and, uh, you know, Lonnie comes back with more uh, fluid, smooth punching. Mansoor Price, heavyweights, main event. 
the winner hoping to get some recognition among the U.S. heavyweight ranks and probably will with an impressive victory. That's coming up live right after this. Kenny, as BJ knows, when you're fighting a southpaw, you can't come in a straight line against southpaw. But it's funny here, it's the southpaw who's coming in a straight line against uh, Lonnie. You know, Ryan's coming in a straight line. He can't get out of the way punch. He's not making him, giving him no angles. He's not slipping and sliding. He's coming straight down. And anything Lonnie throws, he's hitting him. Yeah. Thompson couldn't have drawn it up better, could he, if he That's had his sure. own game plan to lay out here? The difficult thing is Ryan's using a little bit of foot movement to come in and out. But when he comes in, he commits. And when Lonnie sees that, he plants his feet, and he shoots the punches right up the middle, and he's got the quicker hands of the two fighters. So. That's that's what I throw a straight line, straight line, gets hit with a hook, boom, and knocks him off balance. You know, Ryan, you know, he's fought a courageous fight tonight, came in with the wrong game plan, but I want to give credit to Lonnie tonight. He comes off a knockout loss. He beat Yakimus Riley in his last fight. He's beating Ryan Coyne, a well-known North American contender, light heavyweight here. Um, two very good wins for him, and uh, you gotta start to mention his name during uh, you know the crop of top uh, light heavyweights here in the United States. Final seconds of this one. Thompson has been in charge. And closes it out with one more shot to the face. And a nice hand for Lionel Thompson. Trying for his third consecutive victory. He feels he has it. Most here probably think so. If you just tuned in, you would say that guy had a tough time tonight. And Ryan Coyne certainly did. <laughs> He definitely had a tough time, a lot for, uh, you know, Ryan Korn to take from a fight like this. But if you're Thompson and you're in the corner of Thompson, you got to be happy. He went out there, he went on a very big scene, he dominated a guy who was, uh, you know, very tough, very sturdy, and uh, he did a fantastic job, Kenny. He looked good tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, yeah, yeah Lonnie, Lonnie looked good, don't get me wrong. I, I just think uh, that um, Ryan had a little bit to do with that. If he was a little more slicker, slip and slide a little bit more, Give him more of an, uh, a moving target. He might have been, not have been as sharp. I'm not saying he wouldn't have won the fight because yeah. I, cause he had no opposition coming back. But at least try to make the guy miss once in a while. Yeah. And that says it right there. A tough night for Coin. That cut opened up about over his left eye about halfway into this fight. But I'm Irish. I couldn't have leave. The coin who said he was rejuvenated and ready to go. Thompson said, I think I will take my time and either get a stoppage or a unanimous decision. It appears that it's going to be the latter. The judges have turned in their scores. And let's go to Joe Antonacci with the verdict. Boxing fans, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. And all three of our judges, Debbie Barnes. George Hill and Joe Pasquale scored about 99 to 90 in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. From Buffalo, New York, Lonnie B. Thompson. Lionel, Lonnie B. Thompson. Just as he predicted, he was going to either get a knockout or a unanimous decision. It was a strong unanimous decision victory for him, his third in a row. And he goes to 15 and 2 as we take a look now at the punch count in this. The total punch is thrown. 606, Thompson landing 224. And that was from the get-go. He set the tempo in the first round, continued all the way through, especially with the jabs, throwing 279. Connecting on 62 of those. And it was Thompson in power punches as well. And that's the way it went throughout. He landed 50% of his power punches tonight, connecting 162 times to Ryan Coyne. Let's go now to the winner with Chris. Lot a little different than the guy we saw fight Sergey Kovalev last yeah. time here at NBC. Yeah. How do you feel about the way you fought tonight? Well, um, I could have did better. I could have picked it up a little bit and got the knockout. You know, um, like I said, it's a learning experience. I'm just in the gym listening to my corner, Billy Giles, Leon, Poppy. We're in the gym working super hard, and um, I got a lot of things learned. I'm, I'm getting better and better every day, every fight. You know, I'm going to get better. Did you know early on that you could handle any power he had coming to you? Um, yeah, after being in the ring with a, with a puncher like Kovalev, I'm really not worried about nobody, you know, hurting me and my mistakes. Pulling back on my chin, I've been working on slipping up, getting under, using my speed, using my boxing skills, you know. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of those boxing skills, starting in round number two. Did a lot of good body work in these rounds. Tell us what you see. Okay. Well, right there, I'm just, you know, trying to open him up, trying to get him come out of the shell. So, so, I can, so, so I can land some cleaner punches, keeping a tight defense. Seemed to have no problem getting through that guard. Yeah, no, um, my trainer, Billy Yow, has been teaching me strong jab, 
you know, threw it steady. I used to do it, throw it quick, but now I throw it with power. Then you see a body shot we worked on looping, coming over under with the body shot, you know, digging that. He was tough. He took a lot of hard, excuse me, he took a lot of hard punches to the head and to the body, but we broke him down and we got the victory tonight. How different is the guy we saw tonight versus the guy we saw against Kovalev? Well, the guy tonight, I'm more confident in my team, you know, um, training super hard, working on my mistakes, and um, having real good, good, tough, solid sparring partners. Thanks, Lionel. And um, right now, I'd like to take a minute to, you know, thank Kobe back at home. My first bishop, you know, Pastor Brown, Pastor Jones. Happy birthday to my sister, Renee Thompson, my Aunt Joni, my cousin Leona, my big cousin Morris. Um, anybody else I'm forgetting, sorry. I love you guys, and I'll see you when I get home. <laughs> Kenny? All right, thanks, Chris. I think that covered it all for Lionel Lonnie B. Thompson tonight, saying hi to all of his family and friends and winning for the third straight time since that knockout loss that we saw here to Kovalev and doing it in impressive fashion, handing Cohen his second straight.